วัสดีค่ะ Hi everyone สวัสดีค่ะ Hi Hi Stephanie สวัสดีค่ะเราจะรอให้เพื่อนมิสกรานบราซิลมาแชร์กับเราในอินเดอร์ไฮฮายสเตฟานีอ่าอัมเรลขอบคุณขอบคุณที่ทำงานดีทั้งสวัสดีค่ะมีแฟนงานงานคนไทยบ้างไหมคะ Hi from Panama Hi from Thailand <laughs> Thailand Life วันไหนคะเอ่อของ Thailand ยังยังไม่มีกำหนดการนะคะของ Thailand ค่ะยังไม่ได้มี appointment มา We need our interview with Miss Venezuela Because we want to know about her English skill, uh, Miss Venezuela. Yeah, she, um, actually we text like most of the Miss Grand around the world to do the interview with them. So I'm not sure if Miss Grand Venezuela, if we contact already or maybe she didn't reply yet or something. But we'll check later. Okay, everyone, can you please um, can you tell me about my internet? Is it good today or not? Internet's good or not? Good or bad? Or can you hear me well? I hope my internet was is good today, cause I've been disappeared for a few s interview because I need to fix my internet. ได้ยินปกติไหมคะอ่าอินเทอร์เน็ตรบกวนเช็คให้ให้ดีนาทีนะคะได้ยินกันปกติไหมเออโอเคตอนนี้ก็18คนดูไลฟ์นะคะเรารอมิสกรานสเปนเข้ามาก่อนเนาะมิสกรานสเปนไม่เข้ามาสวยมากมิสกรานสเปนนี่กำลังดูแบบสตอรี่สวยจังอ๋อหนึ่งชั่วโมงที่แล้วเมคอัพอยู่มิสกรานสเปนตอนนี้ก็กำลังรอมิสกรานสเปนนะคะประมาณหนึ่งนาที so right now we are waiting for Miss g r a n d Spain to come and join our interview Uh, if it's any question that you want to ask specifically, maybe about politics, about economics, or peace and war, violence, or everything, just type out the questions and I will ask her. Okay. Right now I'm waiting. มีคนไทยบ้างไหมคะที่ดูไลฟ์อยู่ตอนนี้มีคนไทยบ้างไหมเอ่ยไม่มีคนไทยเลยเหรอคะหรือว่าไม่อยากคุยกับลีนากันแล้วมาหาลูกกันหน่อยเดี๋ยวสองร้อยสองร้อยคนที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดูอยู่ตอนนี้ที่ดู Who is your favorite Miss Grand in this year? Uh, I'm not sure how many countries can enjoy Miss Grand International yet, but who are your favorite? 20 people watching right now. Who is your favorite Miss Grand? 
which country? Actually, I saw that there are many, uh, many girls that are actually really interesting, like good mindset, good, good speaking, uh, good English skill, and look good looking actually, like many of them. So I think this year gonna be tough for Miss Grand International 2020. But let's see. <laughs> Internet is good, my It's my inter internet is good or not? My connection. That's me. Con Thai lad. P. T. T. Wood underscore underscore. Oh, I'm not going to be Thai. Do you know the name? Oh, Lina, I'm going to Lina, I'm going to scroll. แล้วลีน่าขอโทษเมื่อกี้แบบเมื่อกี้ลีน่าไม่ได้สครูลมันอยู่คนปะฮะ Hello Oh sorry I didn't know that you were in live already cuz I didn't see you last time Yeah I'm very fast I just saw you were live and I just sent a request <laughs> Anyway um good morning there right Good the morning Ilana. yeah and good night for you I'm going to put my <laughs> good night, hat on yeah. so. It's a night yeah, 9 p.m. right now he's in Thailand and okay before we go into the interview I know please, I know you stuff. I know you guys used to sleep early right like eight yeah yeah eight sometime yeah for me okay yeah, so I please introduce that. yourself with the fan please okay so talking about myself I should say that I am this very spontaneous person and always very happy because I come from a country for the carnival, and carnival for us is a symbol of happiness. I'm a mm. medical student. I'm in the fourth year. I've traveled for like more than 25 countries working as an international model. 25 countries? Model. Yes. Including Thailand, because I have lived oh, really? in Thailand in the past. Yeah, I have You've so been much here experience already? here. Two times. Wow. Like, each time, have... like how, how long? For like three months or like? Yeah, I have to share this experience. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm very excited to share this experience with you guys. So I I'm so happy to do this live video today because going back to Thailand for me is like going back in time and you know and have a new opportunity to do things different. I was in Thailand my first time for a photo shooting. I was shooting. Actually, I was living in India and I got this job in Thailand. They will mm. shoot in Thailand. And after so, I got this job, yeah. Is any Thai food you like? Of course. I love Tell Fanta. me. <laughs> I love the, my favorite food in Thailand. It's mango sticky rice. Oh, really? That's kind of like popular dish in Thailand. I really yeah, love Everyone, really like love all the country, food. when they come to Thailand, they always love, I love it, sticky rice and mango. It, it is. My only problem with the mango stick rice is that I cannot stop eating and I will oh. eat every day and I cannot eat And you're a model, no? You, have, you cannot eat that much. <laughs> but I remember I lived in Town in Town. I don't know if you oh, know. Okay, okay, Town I lived well, in Town in Town. You seem to know very well about Thailand. Yeah, I know. It's I like really coming know. back home again. It is oh like coming back. I even talked to the people from my agents. I was working with chic models. Oh, They're yeah. super okay. nice. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be there again. Because my first time in Thailand, I got mm -hmm. this job. And after a few days, they asked me to stay because I was going to shoot another job. So mm -hmm. it was like 10 days for free. And I did this like diary on my Facebook, 10 days uh -huh. in Thailand. And every day wow. I did something different. Yeah. It seems like you really completely fell in love with Thailand. Yeah, I even had a cooking class in Thailand to cook oh, really? Thai food. Yeah. What's, what, what, what did you cook? What did you learn? I learned how to make Pad Thai. I pad learned, Thai? Oh, that's yeah. great. So but thai. I cannot make it here because I don't have the spices and the flavors, you know, so I cannot cook uh -huh. it here. But I also learned how to do the milk, the milk with the coconut you know mm -mm. coconut milk yeah yeah the coconut milk so we could use that for cooking 
I mm-hmm. learned so many things. I have the photos on a very old iPad because there's no good quality in these pictures. But I still wow. look at them and I'm like, oh my god. So finally you have a chance to come back right now, especially during this time in the world. Yeah, it's going to be so amazing. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Bangkok really has my heart. I think if you check my Facebook like six years ago, you're going to find the mm-hmm. pictures like eating the insects in the street. And... Insect? Did you try that? I did because I oh was my god! Food. Oh my god! You know, like only a few people they really eat that actually, like you know. But yeah, Thai people we eat too. But you know, when you go to Khao San Road, you know Khao San Road. Of course, I love Khao San Road oh because so god. many lights and so many people. It's very crowded. Like and there is yeah. a market so... close by, right? Pardon? There is a market close by. I don't remember the uh... name. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know either. But yeah, in Khao San Road, there's like um, the insect. If actually for tourists, always, always for tourists, that's scorpion. Did you try scorpion? I know, I did. <laughs> oh, really? Because I just How did it? not Tell try me. I'm sorry, I haven't that. even tried yet. You haven't? No. <laughs> oh my god! So that's the deal. Once we are there. You have to know the day that we they they might take us to Calson Road, so you should oh. go there and you should have it with us. Wow, that's amazing! You even have scorpion already. I'm even yeah. tried. I haven't even tried yet. Yeah, scorpions are like many worms and insects. Yeah. And in Thailand, I was able to do my diet. Actually, it was the place that I did my diet like really hard because there is fruits everywhere, very fresh mm. food. And I had the most wonderful job there because I traveled to the islands like PT. Oh. We were traveling for shooting. I just uploaded this video and it was amazing. I got this job in India and we supposed to shoot in Cape Town. But because I went to Thailand to do this job, mm-hmm. they just decided to change. And we were like mm-hmm. one week traveling around, going around for the shooting. It was amazing, really an amazing experience. So after that, I was like, I have to go to come back to this place. I wanted to spend more time here because mm-hmm. you guys are so nice everywhere you Thank go. Thank you. Like, Sawadika. Sawadika. Like, Welcome to Thailand. <laughs> yeah, the, everyone is so sweet and so cute, and I felt like Thank I was you. home, and I was away from my home for almost one year. And oh. my agents was trying hard to take me to Thailand, and I have this contract in Philippines, which I always want to go. But I was so in love with Thailand. I was, please wait, let's wait oh. for Thailand. The answer from Thailand. And at the end, I got these Asian chic models. They were amazing, and I mm. spent three beautiful months there. I can't really wait to be back. Okay, so uh, you have been in Thailand already, which is like uh, many Miss Grand from around the world. They haven't been yet, so that's a good thing that you have been uh-huh. here already. So <laughs> you know, right? That in March, you, uh, Miss Grand International, are going to be hold the events in Thailand, and so some Miss Grand they requested already w- what food they want during the quarantine. What food do you want? To I want a Thai food. I want a pad Thai. I want a menu, you guys. I want a fish. I want a fish. I want a fruit. These amazing fruits that you can only find in Thailand. I'm gonna say, oh, my that's... friend, just think that I'm a Thailand girl and just oh, give me the food. ค่ะก็เขาบอกนะคะว่าเอ่อเขาอยากได้ผัดไทยแล้วก็ผลไม้ในช่วงเก็บตัวที่ควอนตินที่จะเป็นช่วงสิบสี่วันนะคะจะเ
uh, so I, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know what it is. So when you graduate, you're going to be doctor. Yeah, exactly. Oh. In two years. Dr. Miss Gran. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I wish Miss Gran is that. Okay, so why your sister started this um, medical bachelor? Okay, so let, let me explain a little bit about me and my life. Okay. I please. wasn't a good student when I was younger because I always believed that the school was holding me for, from my talent for things that I want to do. Because I was mm -hmm. an athlete at that time, I was playing volleyball. But you know, in the school, they always push you to be like a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, ah, or true. something like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I always have in my mind that everyone has a talent. And you should explore your talent. So I started mm -hmm. to play volleyball and I was dedicating myself for it until I got an invitation from an agent. So that's how I started my modeling career. No one supports me because mm -hmm. imagine I'm from a very small town in Brazil and I'm from the Northeast. So here people are not really open mind, you know, and that time, like 10 years ago, it was even worse. And they always see the modeling career as something like you won't have a good future if you're if you are uh, a model. Mm. But I always believe myself. I believe what I could do, and I invest in this career. And after like two years, just having your regular jobs and playing volleyball, I got an invitation to start my international career. Mm -hmm. So I speak to my mother. And she always wants me to study and stay in, at university. And I told her, I don't want to do this right now. I don't want to go to university. I want <laughs> to travel around the world. I want to know me better about myself. I want to know where I want to be. And wow, to know that, so I have to know places, you know. I cannot stay here. My country mm -hmm. is like 300,000 people. Mm -hmm. For Brazil, it's small. Mm -hmm. And my mother, she... It, amazing woman and even though she loves me so much that's only mm -hmm. me my mother and my sister because my father passed when I was 10 years old and my mother never wants to have anyone anymore because she always said that she had the love of her life mm -hmm. so it was a really breaking heart to left my mother and my sister by themselves but I did and mm -hmm. I started traveling when I was 17 I went to Mexico I mean for Asia yes yeah, that's young. I wish to have that age right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but let's forget okay, about an age. And yeah. then I started traveling around. I went to Mexico. I went to Turkey, to Germany, Greece, China, India. So and awesome. India was one of the places that really touched me because I saw a lot of people suffering. And I feel like I want to do something. I was like, I cannot just stand and see those people. They need us. In mm -hmm. India, like, I see a lot of women burn from their mm -hmm. husband. And this was a really breaking heart. And I always had in myself, I want to do something for it. And I always want to study medicine because I saw my father sick. And I want to have the power to give him health, you know. Even though I know right now that doctors cannot do it because we need much more than our hands and our knowledge. But to be able to advise people how to take the best care of their health, it's a blessing that you can give to someone. So after five years, I was traveling around and I just decided, like, I want to become a doctor. That's what I want. I can help people. I can take care of their health. And I'm always, I like to exercise and take care of my body. I eat very healthy, everyone in my house. And all my friends around me, they're not like this. And I'm always like, you have to take care of you. What you eat mm -hmm. is what your body will become. So everyone said, you should become a doctor. You are like a doctor because you are always uh, talking okay. about take care of health. But it's very hard here in Brazil to get the medical university, like really hard. So I went back. I tried to study. I was like three months studying and I gave it up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got an invitation to travel to Spain for a work. Okay. And I went back after one year and a half. I was like, I'm going to take one week off and I will be back very soon. 
But I, I went back like one year and a half ago. So after that, this one year and a half, I was traveling again. I started studying in London. I was doing this fashion business because I always want to do business. But when I was there, I was like, this is not what I want. I want to become a doctor. So I will go back to my country. I will take whatever it takes, but I will study and I will get it. And everyone mm -hmm. says that I sh might take like five years to get approved in the university. But I did in one year and a few months. After that, every day since I got the university, I go to the hospitals almost every day. I do it because I want to do, you know, I go to learn and I already work with plastic surgeries. And this is just where I find myself, you know, it's, I find myself in many places, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> but seems like you're well with it. You love it. Yeah, I love it. I really love it. Like I wake up on Saturday, on Sunday, really early to go wow. to the hospitals and I'm just so happy. And, you know, even when you're tired and, Sometimes the patients, the most of the patients, they just want to talk. They want someone to look into their eyes and understand their pain. Sometimes you don't even give to them a pill. It's just your words that change that people's life. And when this happens, you just feel so grateful. And for me, gratitude is the feeling that everyone should experience, you know. And every day I get this from the patients. And even when they see me and they say, like, you are the Miss Brazil? <laughs> and I'm like, some of them recognize me. And I'm like, yes, I am. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe. <laughs> it just like make that day, you know. It is. It makes my day. And for me, the most important is that I break this thing that this think that a model cannot be something else. A beauty queen cannot be something else. This is the opposite. A beauty queen is a lot of things. And this mm -hmm. thing is what makes her a beauty queen, you know. It's not only the face. It's what you have behind it. Mm -hmm. It's the beauty from behind. Not the superficially one. Wow. So, this is what I believe. Mm -hmm. So, um, went back to the point. Um. What do you feel after you become Miss Grand Brazil? I felt nervous at first because okay. I was like, oh my God, what a huge responsibility. And I went to the Miss Grand Brazil and I just went so relaxed and I'm, I was like enjoying each day. And when I saw myself holding hands with that girl, beautiful girl, I was, I just closed my eyes and I was talking to God because I have a big faith. And I was like, if it's this, what you want in my life, God, just make me be able to do it. Because I wasn't afraid of anything. I was afraid of win and not do my best. You know, I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I was, that I was capable. So mm -hmm. that's what I was asking. If I am capable to do this, if it's really... I can do, I just want to win and I'm going to do my best. And this is what happened. I won. And I was like, and this okay, year you are. here I am. There was a God wish and I will do my best. But I was mm -hmm. thinking that I have so many responsibilities. I have my university. I don't want to stop my university. Mm -hmm. But I could handle really well. I could study. I passed in all my exams. And I was also attending to all the events that I have to do, everything that I have to. And with my university, I could do some social work that I always do, but I could do with more voice and more power because I'm mm -hmm. a Miss Grand Brazil. And now mm -hmm. I can ask people and I have my voices louder to ask things, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So improve my life in a way that I cannot explain. So... um since you become, you know, being models and beauty queen uh, is different. Like, because model, we just work because I'm working as a model too. But being beauty queen is like, I you become a puppy. you work as a model. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a model in Thailand. Um, so when you become like a beauty queen, that's, um, you are proper people. Like, you will speak louder. Whatever you do, spotlights is on you. Okay. It's make you, like, more be careful about your life since you become exactly. Miss Grand Brazil or not? Like how? 
to it's completely different to be a model and to be a beauty queen. At the beginning, I didn't know the difference. I was just mm -hmm. like, it's the same, both work with your image. But it's not because a model, you don't dress up, you don't wear makeup, you don't be ready, True. you just go to the job. And they Neck will the face, do... get makeup, hair, whatever. Yes, and if you come with makeup or your hair done, they will hate it, you know? Mm, They're yes. like, you have makeup. What are you doing? Clean <laughs> it up. Well, do yeah, it. yeah, because they like you more natural. Mm. What I say is like, and also clients, they want to see who you are mm -hmm. and without all the makeup and hair and made hair. And they see it through your book, your photos, mm -hmm. where you can get, you mm -hmm. know, and they see how far you can go from your pictures. Mm -hmm. And the pageant, you have to always be ready to be dressed up. But this is, the no this is not the most important thing. The modeling life. You just don't speak. You just shoot and that's it. They don't ask your opinion about something. But in the pageant, no. You have, it's much more than your face, than what you were mm -hmm. wearing. Then it's about what you say. It's about what you do, your attitude. So we really mm -hmm. have to watch out what we do because we are an example. People will look at us and see what we are doing. This is the main thing about the pageant. Like the, mm -hmm. for the Miss Grand International, we have, we want to stop the war and the violence. So mm -hmm. I have to take action. Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm just here speaking, let's stop violence, but I'm not showing to people it. That will make no difference, you know? Mm -hmm. So you have to be much more careful about your image, but not this image. Mm -hmm. What you do every day, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so as you mentioned about, I'm oh, sorry, um, as you mentioned about war and uh, stop the war and violence, then you take some action. And actually that's related to Miss Grand International, you know, they always support and do things uh, like stop the war and violence campaign for... Uh, Which Ms. what, sorry? Um, I mean, Miss Grand International, the slogan of the pageants always stop the war and violence campaign. They always have that. Mm -hmm. So... Um, as you mentioned about that so far, what do you think and how you can do with Stop the War and Violence campaign, especially in this world right now, they have a lot of violence, even for family, the war, cold wars and everything. So okay. how can you stop that? Okay, I believe that we human beings, we think that to stop a war and to stop violence depends on other people. We think it's about all the world we think that mm -hmm. the leaders have to start changing it but mm -hmm. i don't think this way i think that our actions is what change because if i have the conscious that i have to promote peace and i have to do something for it i have mm -hmm. to stop hiding i have to stop making bad comments on the internet like provoking a fight mm -hmm. or something like that because we know most of people does it mm -hmm. so if we do it each one of us, we can change the world. But this is the thing. The thing is that my mother always says it and she says so profoundly. She's like, if everyone ju do just a little bit, it's very little, the world mm -hmm. will be completely changed. Because if you stop, if you stop and think and analyze what I have done to stop this, you know, mm -hmm. during this pandemic, everyone is, not everyone, I'm sorry, but most of people, are talking about others. This person is not wearing masks. This person is going out. This person is doing this. But what about yourself? Are you really mm. wearing your mask every day? Are you mm. really not going out? Are you really not going to your cousin's house? Because mm -hmm. you believe that because it's your family and your cousin, it's fine. But someone else mm -hmm. is going out to friend's house. So this mm -hmm. is not correct. So this is the thing. We are always looking to other people's action, but we are not looking to our action. Mm -hmm. So every day or every change, every opportunity that I have, I try mm -hmm. to make a change. I try to make something. It's really small. You know, if I, sometimes I, I'm, I make lunch and I have a lot of food and it's going to go to the trash, I just go down and I give to someone in the street. This is something very simple. And if I say to True. people, they will say like, oh, okay, you did that. Oh, you put your, you did, you give food to that person. Okay, it does not change the world because there is 
a million people that are starving. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I changed one life. Today, one true, people true. will not be mm -hmm. hungry. And this, for me, it's enough. I, don't, I cannot change million people situation. Because mm -hmm. if I could, I would do. There is mm -hmm. no doubt I would do because I was raised like this. I was raised mm -hmm. that we are no one if we are alone. I was raised learning that we have to be always together. I have this example in my house with my mm -hmm. family. We are very connected and we stand for each other. So every person that needs me, I just see as it's my family. So that's what mm -hmm. happened with my patients. When I got a patient, I always see, I always look at him like this is someone's father, someone's brother, someone's son. So I want to do the same as I would do for my family. So this that's is the thing. You stop the war and stop the violence. It's just about empathy. It's about think about others and look to your actions. Do a small thing. Just take one little step. If I do, if you do, if these 39 people that are here watching do something today, we change 41 people's lives. And this for me That's is beautiful. huge. That's beautiful and true. Wow, it's so beautiful. Uh, uh, let me translate first a little bit. ก็คือลีนาได้ถามเพราะว่าเอ่อเรื่องสงครามกับความแรงทีนี้ลีนาก็เลยรีเลทเข้าไปที่ว่าในมิสแกรนด์อินเตอร์ค่ะเขาจะ
place. We have like a small place where you go mm-hmm. to see doctors there you need. And my teacher, mm-hmm. she told me like, oh, the situation here is very bad. And I was like, don't worry, I'll try to do something. So I bought some basic food. Like we, we call here like basket of basic food. Mm-hmm. There's for like uh, 10 days or something. I bought mm-hmm. some of them and I went there to give to them. On mm-hmm. Christmas, I had this beautiful day. It was a very special day. I took like two hours from my dinner and I mm. asked uh, here in a restaurant that they partnership me. We have a partnership. I asked them to give me like 10 pizzas because I want to give in the street for people that was expanding Christmas without wow. food and without their family. Mm. So it was, the gift was for me, not to them. Because when I see their mm. faces, like I locked their door and I was like, is there a dinner here tonight? And the, she was like, oh no we have no dinner i was like don't you have anything for me and she was like i'm sorry i don't have I'm like, okay but i have something for you oh, that's merry cute. christmas they were so happy it was beautiful and the next wow. day i went to the hospital i bought some gifts with help of friends i start this project called influence it for good because i want to use my influence to do something good i have mm-hmm. like twenty thousand people on instagram Imagine if less than, if 1% helps me, it's a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So I asked for my Instagram and for my friends, for my family. They gave me some money. I bought a lot of gifts and I went to the hospital and I gave to the child that were there, like sick during this time. We did this big event for them. They were so happy. And I have one more project that I'm helping right now, which is called Mission of Peace. And it's in Sao Paulo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a huge place. It's a a church, actually. And they receive people from all the country. They're refugees, you know. Mm -hmm. They have some space to them to be there. They help them with doctor, with food to provide their documents to live here in Brazil. I saw so many people from Venezuela, Cuba, from so many countries all around the world. They were coming to Brazil looking for hope, looking for better days. And they found this place and they're like, this is like my home. So I Mm. went there. They told me they were needing a lot of like milk and stuff like that for the people. Mm-hmm. So me and my organization helped me with this. We could, we were able to bring like 200 milk to them, mm-hmm. which is at least, you know, it's 200 family there is being helped, help it. So mm-hmm. every, every person that asks my help, I just do my best to help, you know, maybe I cannot do something huge, like, oh, I start these big projects to help all the women and the, I cannot do it because I don't have enough, you know, money and understand, to understand. do it, but I try to do what I can. Even if it's small, it's, I do my best. The most important That's amazing. is to do That's what amazing. I can. Yeah. So um, before we go into the next questions, uh, I actually said this many times. So uh, as you're helping people with a lot of things that you have done, even you, um, you said you cannot make like a huge project, but you do. That is what is most important. So. Thank you so much for helping human like us. Thank You're you. like an angel to help people. Thank you. That's so kind of stuff you imagine. Yeah. Like everyone around the world, we can create a small things, like even just small thing. But yeah. it's depend on us that we're going to do it or not. Just yes or no. But you decided yeah. to do. And you create a small change and that's help people life. And you continue, you make that day. And that's amazing. And you deserve yeah. the word thank you from all of us around the world. You deserve it. Thank you so much. Okay, so as right now, people not ready that you are going to be the doctor. So they're, you know, at the, this world, uh, right now, the world situation, you know, about COVID. So they want yeah. to know about COVID in your opinion, please. Mm. Okay. COVID is a big challenge in everyone's life. I could see very close how bad is it Mm -hmm. because when you saw in the TV, you see that's really bad when, Mm -hmm. but when you see with your eyes, 
in front of you, you just say like, it's unbelievable. In Brazil, right now, in one place, it's happening. The worst thing that it could happen, people have no oxygen because the hostel is out of oxygen. So it means oh. they have no support to breathe. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you study to save lives and you see a person dying and you cannot do anything. Because so you sad. don't have the resource, you know? Mm. That's why it's the doctors and everyone, not only the doctors, everyone that works with health, they're like so annoyed and so angry with people that are going out and living their lives normally because they can see with their eyes that life has changed. Mm. Our life will never be the same after COVID. It's like a nightmare. Every day, it's a worse meal. It's like another virus, another uh, variation of coronavirus. At the beginning, I was like, I don't know what to do. I was watching the news and I was like, I have to stop watching because I start to have like anxiety. I start to panic. Mm -hmm. Not for me because I'm like, okay, something bad can happen to me if I get COVID, but I'm young, I'm health. Imagine to my family, to my mother, to all these people, mother, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. very glad because thank God no one in my family has got or have got the, in the bad situation, you know. Mm -hmm. But I had COVID and you just don't believe because you protect yourself, you wear a mask, you don't go out, but truly you are infected. And I was like, you don't know how, you know. So this time I've thinking a lot. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking about what this means for us. And mm -hmm. I go back to that thought that I was saying before. It's all about think about others. It's all about empathy. If you wear your mask, your face shield or whatever, you are protecting yourself. But if you go out, your clothes can be infected and you are not protecting others. So you have always to think about the others not only to yourself. So even though the pandemic, it's really bad, I always believe that good things, you can learn good things from the situation. And this is the good thing that I've learned with the situation. We have to think about others. We have to do something like so many old people could not go to the supermarket, could not go do this, their stuff. And for me, it costs nothing to lock the door beside me and this old lady and ask if she needs something. So I really believe that so many people have done this in the pandemic. So many people. I've seen examples that I'm like, wow, congratulations. And other people see this and follow the example and do the same. So at the end, we will learn that we have to stand together. And we will learn that money is not everything. Because True. it doesn't matter how much money you have. Mm -hmm. If you get infected and you become worse, there is nothing can save you, you know? Because the problem with COVID is that we don't know how to treat. Mm -hmm. and like, we have some, okay, this is good. At the beginning, there was so many pills that they say this is going to be good and this and everyone were like just taking pills. But there was no good evidence because to have a good evidence, you need to study a lot. You need to run a lot of tests and searches. But this was, we, were, we weren't able to do this because COVID was going much faster than our studies. So that's mm. what I believe. That's what I think. And I think this pandemic was really bad, but also showed us to see this side, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your opinion. So that's uh, I will translate a little bit. ค่ะก็คือลีนาก็ถามเขาไปว่าเขาคือด้วยความที่เขากำลังจะเรียนจบแพทย์นะคะลีนาก็ถามว่าเขามีความคิดเห็นยังไงกับในเรื่องของโควิดเพราะว่าเมื่อกี้มีคนถามเข้ามาในเรื่องของโควิดนะคะก็คือเขาก็จะให้เป็นคือเขาก็ตอบเป็นเป็นแนวของเขาเนาะว่าเขาตัวเขาเนี่ยเป็นแพทย์คือเวลาเรามองจากทีวีเราเราก็ไม่ได้รู้สึกว่ามันแยกขนาดไหนแต่คือตอนเขาเนี่ยเป็นหมอแล้วเขาต้องไปโรงพยาบาลแล้วเขาก็จะเห็นว่ามันร้ายแรงมากว่าที่บราซิลเนี่ยไม่คือเขาเรียกว่าไงสภาพกรทางการแพทย์ในเรื่องของถังออกซิเจนออกซิเจนไม่พอกับแพทย์กับผู้ป่วยของเขาแล้วบางคนก็เลยต้องแบบเหมือนไป
แล้วตัวแพทย์ก็แบบเหมือนกับว่าอุณิที่แบบทําไมคนไม่อยู่บ้านไม่ป้องกันไม่อะไรแบบนี้ค่ะก็เดี๋ยวเนี่ยถามต่อให้คือเขาตอบค่อนข้างยาวมากค่ะ uh, so uh, you know there's a um, to believe in covid 19 some people they believe that oh covid is just like normal that just come and gone like other new like six n i g h t we just don't know about it. and some people they believe that this pandemic it's really dangerous this covid 19 is really dangerous for it. in your perspective of being doctor What level of the danger it is? Very high. Very like, high. Please, please explain to us. Yes. Okay. Let me explain. I've been talking to. I'm not a doctor yet. I'm a student. I'm the fourth year. I still have two years more. But as I told you, I always do like observe ship and hands on. Observe ship, you know. Mm-hmm. And I work with my friends. I go to the hostel. I stay with them, and I'll. Every specialization, like a neurologist, uh, every in every specialization, COVID mm-hmm. has an effect. You know, it's like it's unbelievable. I try to understand how can a virus can damage all your body. It's just a virus, mm-hmm. and can damage your lungs, your kidney, your mm-hmm. everything. And I, yeah, neuroscience and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, and it's unbelievable because if you know people that had COVID, this person will tell you something that she, she's feeling after had COVID. As I told mm-hmm. you, I did have, and I was like 15 days away, mm-hmm. and even though I wasn't feeling very bad, there was a very very weird feeling, something like I feel that I could not breathe, but I I was. Breathing well, you know, mm-hmm. but you feel something like like someone is in the top of your lungs, and this doesn't go away after 15 days. When you think uh-huh. it's going away, the 10th day it's when it starts the worst. Mm-hmm. And you and I was like freaking, like what if I'm having this and that? And I was talking to my teachers, and I I can't go out. I don't want to go to a hospital because I was I'm not going to a hospital because I'm not feeling bad. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. feeling really bad. I feel mm-hmm. sick. I have had this. My body hurts. I feel all these these things, but it's nothing very serious, and I have to give place to all the people that was much in need. Mm-hmm. After the tenth day, I start feel worse, and I can I, it's it's so weird that I cannot explain until today. I cannot like smell, I cannot like taste well. The taste not the same, mm. and this was just like very basic thing from the COVID. But people that has Another illness or people that are mm-hmm. older, they get really bad. And also, w- young people. I've talked to a lot of friends that saw, like guys with 25 years old, very healthy and athletic, and they mm-hmm. had a problem, like brain problem. You know, I cannot explain because it's very technical terms, so I don't want to get into it. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying is like, don't underestimate the virus. Don't do it. If mm-hmm. if it's to choose one, believe that it's like, ah, okay, there is nothing, or believe that it's really hard. Believe in the second one, that it's mm-hmm. something very dangerous because you only know when you have it or when someone close to you have it. The thing is that some people has and do not feel anything. So they think that everyone will be like that, but this is not the true because we see in Brazil it's like 150,000 people that has died, like more than 200, I guess, right now. I just stopped mm-hmm. watching the news. I just stopped seeing it because I was like, I can't believe, you know. And I was getting a lot of anxiety with that, and I was mm-hmm. afraid. Like, imagine if someone from my family, and I see so many. Some of my friends they came from another state from Brazil to stay in my town because it's like safer, you know, mm-hmm. than in their place. Because she lives in this place that they are without oxygen and they have no places at hospitals, and it's crazy, you know. There is someone needing a hospital, but you have no place to put this person. So do not underestimate. Just Believe, take care of yourself, and take care of others. If you don't do, if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for others, for your mother, for your father, for your grandma. Do it to them. Thank you so much. So, um, so please, um, as you say, it's really high, uh, dangerous in this virus. Could you please uh, 
give out and ask why. What is the best way to avoid get getting infected from COVID nineteen? You can wear your face mask. You can wear face shield. You can wash your hands all the time. But if you are still going out, you still can get the virus or infect someone. Because you know when I was <laughs> when I had to go to the hospital. And we put mm -hmm. like cap, we put uh, glasses, we put the mask, we put the, our like jacket. I don't know if I'm saying the right word. We put everything, we are covered, mm -hmm. but sometimes we just wash our hands and we see a patient, we touch and our eyes are like itchy and we, we, we touch our uh, eyes. Okay. And, or, mm -hmm. You know, it's something that you cannot live always like this. Don't touch my eyes. Don't touch my nose. Don't touch, you know, you get in mm -hmm. your, your keys and then you wash your hands and then you touch your car. And mm. <laughs> so it's like you get crazy. You know, I don't know if, have, if you have heard, but we had some cases here in Brazil, like that people saying, I did not go out and I got COVID, coronavirus, maybe because of the food that I order from outside. And there is a study that shows that COVID can be in the food as well, because they saw that COVID was in their stomach, you know, mm -hmm. and their So you can also get it through the food. And at the beginning, I was like, this is, I don't believe that. The people mm -hmm. are like making it bigger. But I start reading, I start studying. I'm like, I can't, I, I can't believe this is true. So if I'm going out, eating outside, I can get infected by my food, you know? Ugh. So mm. if you go out, you just get crazy because you're like, don't touch me. Don't. And people, not everyone has this conscience that you cannot hug, you cannot touch hands. I, sh I am sure that one day during this pandemia, you went somewhere and you saw someone that wants to hug you, that wants to say like, Okay, don't worry. I don't have coronavirus. <laughs> Just give me a hug, and I'm like, kiss, kiss. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I miss you so much. Now give me a hug. Okay, no, just hint. I don't have coronavirus. I'm like, and how do you know you don't have? <laughs> yeah, true. So I had the test last week. I'm like, my friend, maybe even when you went to the laboratory, you got coronavirus, and you don't know because this is the thing <laughs> we are fighting with an invisible. Thing, you know, you cannot see it. So this is the problem. And this is the, this is the problem because we always think like, oh, it's my sister. It's fine. I can hug her. Oh, it's my mother. It's fine. No, but it's not. During this pandemic, I moved with my sister. We are living in another house because my sister also studied medicine. So mm -hmm. we were in the hospital. We had to go to university and we don't want to be close to our mother. So my mother is in one house. We are in another house. And we try to not like, yeah. yeah, hug each other. I know it's really tough because especially here in Brazil, you're very warm. We want to hug, we want to kiss. But we have to think about that this hug, this kiss mm -hmm. can be, a, can make a big damage. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to not like, oh, bye. <laughs> bye. Yeah, like a hi. <laughs> just like, not to do so close. So I, I was translate to people first. Ha, ก็ดิฉันหาเพราะว่าด้วยด้วยความที่เขาเรียนด้านเรื่องแพทย์เนี่ยเขามีวิธีอ่ะเขาอยากจะแนะนําคือดิฉันหาว่ามีวิธีการแนะนํายังไงในไม่ให้ติดโควิดซึ่งเราก็รู้กันอยู่แล้วเนาะมันจะมีในเรื่องของอ่าใส่ก็จะใส่แมสส์ใส่เฟสชิลหรือใส่อ่าตัวโค้ดที่แบบเป็นเครื่องทางการแพทย์แต่คือเขาบอกว่าสิ่งทําสิ่งที่สําคัญที่สุดเนี่ยถึงแม้ว่าเราจะใส่ก็ตามแต่ถ้าคุณยังออกไปข้างนอกก็คือมันก็แทบจะไม่ช่วยอะไรเพราะาบางทีเนี่ยเราล้างมือแล้วแต่เราก็ยังไปจับของไปจับเราอ่าเรารถไฟบีเทสจับเราประตูที่คนเดินผ่านมาดังนั้นเนี่ยบางทีมือเราเนี่ยมันก็แบบเราไปสัมผัสดวงตาของเราแบบขยี้ตาคันตาอะไรเงี้ยค่ะแล้วก็เขาบอกว่ามันสามารถติดต่อกันทางอาหารได้ดังนั้นเนี่ยใครที่แบบว่าบอกว่าเออฉันไปทานข้าวมาคนเดียวไม่ติดโควิดหรอกคือเขามิสแกรนบาซิลก็เลยบอกว่าคือมันสามารถติดได้ทางอาหารดังนั้นก็อยากให้ระวังกันไว้ในเรื่องตรงนี้ So, okay, there's some people who are watching us, and he gives you a question. What is the hardest case that you do as a doctor? Oh, uh, okay. What's the hardest case 
that you do as a doctor. Actually, I told you that I'm not a doctor yet, so it's easy. And, uh, yeah, for... it's okay. I mean, maybe you've been in a operation room or something that you have seen at what? Yeah, I've I've been in the operation room since I got the university. Mm -hmm. Always, because I love surgery. That's something that I pretend to do. Mm -hmm. For me, it's easier because I always have the support of my teachers, you know. <laughs> When I don't know something, they're there supporting me. But I think the worst case... Well, let me think. Because thank God, I just saw I'm always in a very success procedures. I have been... I've done with the doctor because I work like helping the doctors like... I think in America it's called assistant physician. It's someone that helps the doctor. It's not a doctor, but helps the doctor, you know? Yeah, okay, I got it. So basically, I ask the doctor to do the surgeries after I do the suture skin and this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I went to the surgery, a cardiologic surgery, and we had to take a vein from the leg and put in the heart. And also, we had to, that was a, like, blood clotting, you know, and the artery, the main artery. This procedure mm -hmm. was like 10 hours, I guess. It was mm -hmm. a really wow. hard procedure. Chins But, hours. and I was like, I couldn't believe because I was like, this person, you know, when you do, it's a very interesting thing, but when you do a cardiologic surgery, most of them, you stop the heart because you cannot work. It's, it's oh, really? everything very time, yeah. So you, you stop the, the heart and there is a machine and there is someone that is a professional that works, like manage this machine. And this person at this machine does the job of the heart, you know, because basically wow, I just your know heart, that. yeah, this is very interesting. I think not many people know because they're not in the area because mm. your heart basically like clean the body and bomb the, the blood to all your body. Mm. So the machine, that's the machine does. The, the blood goes to the machine, cleans the, the blood, then goes back to all your body. And the heart yeah. is stopped. And it's so beautiful. Imagine like 10 hours, your heart is stopped and someone is doing the job of your heart. And then when you finish, you just, okay, kind of like turn off the machine And it's back to work again. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, oh, and you're wow. like, oh my God. Well, I never know about this. Thank you for telling us about this. Yeah. I think you can like YouTube or something like that. I'm sure. And it's a beautiful feeling. It's amazing feeling. I've always been in like orthopedic surgeries. I've been mm -hmm. in very tough orthopedic surgeries mm -hmm. and cardiology and, and, uh, abdomen like and plastic surgeries i'm most mm -hmm. into plastic surgeries mm -hmm. because it's the opportunity that i had so thank you so much um do you know euthanasia do, do you what know yes i know euthanasia okay so do you agree yes. or not you know euthanasia for some country uh So, um, for some country, it's illegal, and for some countries, it's legal. For you, as Miss Grand Brazil, what do you think about euthanasia? Well, for me, I don't agree. And I don't agree because I think God gives you a life, and he's the only one that's supposed to take it, you know? I think the... Blessed, I think our biggest gift is life. God has given or I don't know what you, some people just have a different God, you know, but most of mm -hmm. people believe that someone has given us our life. That's what I believe. And I think no man can decide where it's time to, when it's time to finish. So that's why I would never do it. I respect who wants that's right. I understand it's not something like someone help. And you just like kill this person. It's not like this. I know mm -hmm. that euthanasia happens in like bad situation that this person, if like continue living, if you have a very, very precarious life, but I would never do it. I had a dog 
that my sister, she rescued in the streets and he was very sick. He was like a little puppy and she took to the vet and all the vets told her to do the euthanasia because he was suffering. He could not move his legs. Mm. I don't know if you say legs for dogs, but, <laughs> <laughs> it's, but okay. it's okay. He could not move it, but we could not do it. We all agree in my house that we want to do it. So we just to start taking care of him. And my sister, she started to do some exercise. She put the dog in like water and see if oh, he could yeah. swim. So every day we were doing this. When, and one day we were getting home and the dog started like trying to move, you know? Wow, so we that's like, amazing. Oh my God. So after the, the days was going, passing by, the dog starts walking again and run. And he became like just a normally dog, you know? He was the happiness of our life. After one year, he died because, yeah, he has this brain problem and mm. there was nothing we could do. But we have this wonderful year with this dog. We always remember it. I, like last week, I always see the pictures, you know, and I see the videos and I have more two dogs. They were, they were like very attached. It was beautiful. So it was one year, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe... I, who am I to don't believe in miracle, you know? Who am I to doubt? I don't know. Maybe happen. A miracle can happen. I don't know. It's for me, I believe that to God's hands, nothing is impossible. You just need to have faith. So if it was like someone from my family, mm -hmm. I don't think I would do it. I saw many situations. I have some, I have an example here in my city of a young lady, she was like four months in coma and everyone believed she would, she would never wake up and mm -hmm. she, she had a car accident and it was four, four months in coma, it's a lot. So for some people they could say, you know, it's four months, if she wake up, she, wa she will wake up like not normally, she will not be able, because when this happens, you don't know if this person will wake up and speak, we wake up and walk and see, you don't know how much damage it was in your, in your brain. You mm -hmm. just know once the person is awake. And she mm -hmm. woke up after four months. She forgot what happened to her. She was even a medical student as well. Mm -hmm. She was a doctor. She just graduated. And she's uh -huh. supposed to do it again because they would see if she, she was able to do it because she forgot so many things. But she woke up and she could, she could walk, she could see, she could talk. She was like perfect. It was like a oh, miracle. It's amazing. So I respect those who prefer this way, but I would not do it, you know, because I think that it's not in my hand to decide that this person is time for her life to end. I don't know what is her opinion, you know. Even though if I say, oh my God, my mom, my family, if one day I get in coma for like one year, please just turn off the machines because I want to die. If, even if I say this alive, imagine if I get in the situation, no, this will not be, <laughs> this will not happen, but, and my family has to decide this, how my family is going to live, how my mother is going to live, thinking that she did that, you know, so I would not do it. That's just my opinion. So before I can run out of time, so I have two questions for you. Um, as you're starting in medical bachelor, that you're going to be finished soon, what you want to see the change in medical industry? I want everyone to have a good, good health quality. It's not about, it's here in Brazil, we have a program called SUS, which is health for everyone and it's for free. So everyone, I don't know in countries, the other countries are different. How is in mm -hmm. your country? Do you have like a free service for doctors or you only get if you pay? Uh, we have. You have for free if you need? Uh, pardon me, more time, please. I mean, if you need a doctor or a hospital, you always have to pay or there is like can a be free both. hospital. Can be both, right? But sure. in some countries, this doesn't happen. You have to pay, you know? Right. And here in Brazil, we have this program, which is one of the biggest in the world. We have like a bigger accent, but mm -hmm. in the paper, it's perfect, you know, but 
living in the day, the reality is not like this. There is no medicine, there is no enough professionals, no doctors, no nurse, and we don't have the resources. And unfortunately, people that cannot pay for a good health, for a good hospital, they might die. And it's different. If someone, if my mother is sick and I have the opportunity to take her to Sao Paulo, to a good hospital over there, mm -hmm. I would do it straight away. And I'm sure her chance would be like 90% more than if she was here. You know, mm -hmm. this is a fact. This is a fact. I can see because I'm because I am in a hospital and in this place, I can see close to me. Even when we study, it's like, okay, this is the best medicine for the patient, but mm -hmm. we don't have this. You know, we have the worst one. I'm like, mm. why are you using this if you said that this is not good? Because that's what we have, and we have mm -hmm. to work off with what we have. You know, and at the big hospitals, you have like. People are qualified doctors, qualified nurses, a qualified team because a doctor mm -hmm. cannot work by, by himself. A doctor has mm -hmm. need to have the whole team and they have all the resources and medicines and the new technology. So this mm -hmm. is what I want for everyone because everyone deserves it. Like Brazil has so much money. We are a huge country. We should invest in health. Mm -hmm. Medical university costs a lot it's crazy how much it costs so mm -hmm. they could take part of this money to invest invest in the hospital invest in in attendance like i see in my in my experience like in my classes you know we can schedule for example five patients a day but we have time mm -hmm. to see like 10 you know so i'm like mm -hmm. why do we schedule only five if we can see 10 I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. it's just the rules. It's just the rules. It's just how it should be. Some of mm -hmm. them, I just ask, can I bring someone, please? Because she's trying to call. She cannot get a doctor. She's really in need. Some of them say yes. Some of them say no. And I don't get it. Sometimes we have no patience to see. And I know there's so many people in need, so many people that cannot afford and pay a doctor. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why there is no patience here? If there is so many people outside that need this assistance, you know, mm -hmm. one day I asked to my teacher, can I upload on my Instagram who needs a neurologist and a schedule? And he was like, yeah, okay, do it. In this day, we have like 15 people. <laughs> and the lady at the, the reception, she was like, this person is also for the doctor because there's 15 people over there. Because normally it's like three, two. Mm. And I was like, do you see? They need it, but it's to, the rules. The rules is this. The rules is like that. So I don't know why people make it so complicated, you know? If we have mm -hmm. free time, we are there chatting. Why can't we see someone? Like, why can't we see someone that needs? So this is the thing that has to change. Everyone deserves the best quality of health, like the best technology, True. the best medicine. In Brazil, they want to, you know, with the vaccines, I know it's something new, it's very hard, but we are vaccinated people like step by step, starting with doctors, starting with old people, but everyone needs it, you know? So they should invest more in this because even if my grandma is protected, my mother is not, and so we all need. And here they want to sell for a private industry Mm -hmm. But thank God they did not accept because imagine it would be like this. So only people that has money will get a vaccine. And what about the people that has no money? And the mm -hmm. thing is like people that has money, most of them just think like, yeah, this is the best way because we pay for it. We don't have to wait. But no, we need to have it. We need to have it fast. Okay, we cannot do it right now because so many people need all the word. But let's try to do our best to vaccinate everyone. And this is not only for coronavirus, you know, it's for all, all the illness and for all the, so many other, you know, skill as well, just mm -hmm. as coronavirus, we just don't know. And things are just simple. I saw this, I was at the ophthalmologist session and we were seeing this patient and this lady, she was getting blind and she was getting blind because her sugar was very high. And this mm -hmm. is so simple, the medication, costs like nothing the government 
give the medicine, but sometimes they just don't have, and it's really cheap, serious. It's like maybe $3, not the best one, just like the bad one, but that you can help you. And I was like, why you are not taking your medicine for the sugar? Because you are getting blind because you don't, you are not taking this medicine. She was like, because I cannot get an appointment with the doctor. I've been waiting for my appointment for like one year. And I was like, what? wow. And we are here. She was waiting for her surgeries for like two years. She was like, oh, my surgery was, that. they were saying like, sorry, it's because of the coronavirus. And she said, but oh, my so surgery, Jesus. it was much before, it was before coronavirus. I supposed mm -hmm. to do it much before. And then the pandemic started and now it's, they are going back to do the surgery. The surgery takes like 15 minutes. It's really fast. And mm. like this surgery in the eyes, it's really fast. But it's so many issues, you know? And I'm like, oh my God. And when I was at the endocrinologist, uh, we were, we had like three, four patients. And I was just thinking about that lady that was waiting for one year. I was like, we could have seen her right now, you know, but she mm -hmm. cannot go there and say like, okay, there is a free, free space here. One patient did not attend to this. Can I go in her place? No, you cannot because mm -hmm. you need to call. You need to give the number of your SUS card and you need to schedule and you need to do that and that. So, oh my God, and what about this person? We, we'll be like getting worse health mm -hmm. during, until she gets the appointment. That's what I believe. I hope it's something that everyone needs. No one can survive without it. So we should invest on it a lot. True, agree. Because um, actually like in Thailand, we have that kind of situation to like, we need to pay to get mm, better quality. And it shouldn't be. As a human being, we should get all the same quality of everything for health care for everything but then money becomes thing that make life easier which i don't understand and for poor people they don't cannot afford it they cannot afford of for course. the medicines like in, cannot afford for the operations cannot sometimes no there are many cases in like around the world like you choose to pay or you cannot afford and then cut your leg for the, some accident exactly and that's and so sad and we see it. you have no idea. We we think that these stories are not true, but it is true. It's and true. I, it's sad. It is. When I was in orthopedic, like last last semester, I guess, there was this girl, she was like twenty five years old or something, that would cut our her leg off. And my teacher, she did not work at the hospital, she was just a teacher and she's the mother of my mm -hmm. friend. She's the mother of my friend that put me into the beauty queen life, mm. like into the pageant life. And she saw it and she was like, no, wh why? We know that we can save her legs. I'm like, yeah, we can, but we, have, we don't have the resource here. So she called a doctor that she knows from another place and she asked him to come and to do her surgery. And he came and the girl, she was, she was crying. She was like, she was like, maybe I don't want this surgery. I just want to cut my leg off. Because the doctors, when they talked to her, they were like, you need to cut it. Otherwise, you have to cut it more. They did not know how to talk, you know. And she was so scared. She was so afraid. And she just, I could see that she just want to, like, stop that feeling. You know, she just, she just wanted that situation to end. Mm -hmm. That she even lost her hope of having her leg. Mm -hmm. And she, and before, and then when she came, when the doctor came and told her, and she was like, no, maybe I just want to cut off because every time they come with different, is it true that they can save my leg? Because I don't want to think that I, that it can happen. And then you come with a bad new again. And I just want to like finish this. And my, maybe my husband will leave me because I have no, like, she was like desperate. Mm. So this this is when I talk about the important the importance of talk to your patient, understand what he's feeling, mm, not true. just like okay you have to do this procedure, okay we're gonna save her. Like no, it's much more than that. You know, it's how you talk. It's like do not lose your hope. We will try our best. Let's try. Maybe it won't work. I don't know, but I want to give a chance. Don't want, don't you want to give a chance? You should. Mm. You must. So this is also the job of the doctor, but not everyone does this. This is a reality. So many mm -hmm. universities, 
there are so many universe, medical universities right now because it's a good business. And there are so many people that do it because of their status, you know, because, oh, I want to I wanna say that I'm a doctor and this is nice, but some people don't really want to do it, you know? We know that doctors get a good money. Some people do it for the money. Some people do it because the father wants, the mother wants, or because all the family are made by a doctors and the son has to be a doctor. But no, just let anyone be who they want. You know, mm -hmm. my mother never told me that I should become a doctor, that I should become an intern, and that I should do this. No, I did my modeling life i want to do it i did for five years i was happy i decided to come back i decided to study something new i decided to study medicine i did she but she's very proud for everything that i do if i say to her i want to quit i don't want to do this anymore and i want to just work do humanitarian job around the world she will say okay if this is what makes you happy just do it this oh, is the amazing. secret if you have, I really believe that if you want to have a su successful life, you just have to do what you love. Because when you do what you love, you don't feel tired, you don't feel angry. You have passion you do for it. Your passion, yes. Because love, it's the best feeling. It's what leads you to the best way. Mm -hmm. So this is what I believe. Don't do money for the status or for because people are asking you do it because this is what you believe that your mm -hmm. mission in life, that is what your heart are asking, you know? Thank you so much. Um, we come to the last questions because it's run out of time. Yeah. So, but so I far, talk a lot. I'm to... sorry because I was very excited to, cut, to tell no, to you guys. No, of course we love you. So um, before we go to the last questions, um, I'll, I want to say that you are a really amazing person. And um, I'm not saying this because like, you know, I have, I, I mean like, I, we don't know each other, but as as far I interview uh, you, you are so like being honest. You don't know. You say you don't know. You not pretend like you know something. <laughs> you are really kind and um, such like also okay, like you you start from little things to create a big things, and I think that's really amazing of you. So you we so come much. to the last questions. That's I think very important. Oh, my why God. you should win Miss Grand International? Wow, my God! Because Brazil deserves this crown. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Please no, explain okay. to us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, I believe if you're asking me why you were asking me why I should win, and I I've had made this question myself, you know, but I was watching, seeing all the beautiful girls. And I was like, wow, there's so many beautiful girls. They are working really hard. We see on Instagram, everyone works really hard. So why me? Why I deserve this? Why not her? And I believe that everyone has their mission in life. I always had this in my heart. This is not something that I'm pretending to be. As I told at the beginning, I did not become a beauty queen and then I start doing things. I was doing things and this led me to become a beauty queen because I, because I realized that my attitude, what I do, it was something. Mm -hmm. oh, but I just turned down. So I got lost in my answer. So uh, that's what I, I believe. My attitudes, my experience made me become a beauty queen. I know my purpose. I know what I want to do as I know I can do a lot just being myself. As a Miss Grand Brazil, I saw that I could impact much, much more people, much more than I could imagine. And imagine as a Miss Grand International. So I'm a very dedicated person. I know what I want. Before I go to the Miss Grand Brazil, I, I was thinking very far, like, I'm going this, and if I win, I'm going to this, take this next step. Is this something really that I want to do? And I want to because when I think about this year, I believe that if you ask me how you think that's going to be your experience being uh, Miss Grand International as for one year, I spoke to Clara Souza. I asked her, what have you done? 
and she was like I've traveled a lot. I have helped a lot of people. I did so many humanitarian work. I speak for ONU. And as she told me that, I was like, this is something that I always want to do. One day when I was in India, I can't forget the situation. I was walking to the gym and I saw this guy hitting an old lady in a wheelchair with a rock. I saw this and I just like got panic I frozen and I like I was just walking very slow and that day I could not stop to do something you know I was so in shock that I could not take one action and after that day I was crying I called my friend I asked him to come to the gym because I couldn't believe what I just saw and I was thinking why did I not do something why didn't I go help that lady but I was afraid I was scared because I was in a different country. I don't know what they could do with me. And mm -hmm. after that, the feeling that I had after was worse than something that could happen if I had helped that lady. The feeling that I felt because I did not help that old lady, it was worse than everything that I could feel. So after this day, I was like, I will never let, my, to, I will never let myself be afraid of anything. I will not limit myself to do something, like to take an action, to help someone. I will never do it. And I was trying to find a way to do it. I was like, so how can I help these people? How can I start taking actions? And I saw in the pageant world the opportunity to do this, to talk and to impact people, to do an action and have people to follow you, you know? So I have this in my mind. I know how much I want it. I know how hard I work for it. And I believe God has plans in my life. And I'm ready for it. I'm really ready for it. That's why I believe that I should win, that I should be Miss Grand International. I want to learn with Mr. Nawat, with Teresa. Everyone talks so good about them. I want to go back to Thailand in a different way, you know, have this different experience do my humanitarian work. This is something I always want to do. I was going to do in Africa. I wasn't able because they did not allow me with like mm -hmm. visa stuff. But this is, I just feel that I'm ready for it. That this is the, the right time. And I promise that I will not disappoint, you know. I know what I am doing. I mm -hmm. know my purpose. This is very clear in my mind. All right, everyone. That's why she should become Miss Grand International 2020. Miss yeah. Grand Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for eating so today with thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank I'm sure you, that thank Thailand you so is waiting for you and you're gonna go so far in Miss Grand International 2020. Thank you so much. Send a big hug to your brother. I believe hmm. your brother that makes the live videos as well. And ขอบคุณค่ะ Bye bye. Bye bye.